In this optimization problem, we are trying to look at uh, what point on the parabola this is closest to this point one one. So it's always kind of hard, like let's create a visual and see what's going, going on with something like this. So uh, I'm talking about a point one one and we have a parabola. So I'm gonna be kind of just focused on the first quadrant. Um, so our graph looks something like this. And then as far as the graph goes, I have a downward facing parabola with a y-intercept of one and actually an x-intercept of one. So I'd have something like that and we're looking for the closest distance. So we know this is one, one. We know that this distance out, we don't know, is x, y. All right, so we don't know what that is, so we're just going to generalize it as x, y. So we are looking for these two values. So we're trying to minimize our distance, which means we're actually going to be messing with kind of a distance formula thing. But I don't have a distance formula memorized very well, but what I can do is create a right triangle because a distance formula is going to actually come from Pythagorean theorem. So what I need to figure out is what's this length, what's this length, and it's the hypotenuse that we're looking to try to minimize. Okay, so we're minimizing distance. Minimum distance. And that distance is going to be our hypotenuse on this. So <clears throat> I need Pythagorean theorem is my equation that I'm going to create. Um, and so I need to figure out what these lengths are. So that length right there is going to be 1 minus the x. And then this height is going to be 1 minus the y. So Pythagorean theorem, we have our distance, which is our hypotenuse, squared is going to equal 1 of the legs squared, 1 minus x squared plus one minus y squared. And we're eventually gonna do the derivative of that. But we need some fixing and cleaning up to do before we get into that. First, I don't want uh, a square on this. I don't want a y value on this. We need to figure out some substitution. So um, let me start with not doing the square root quite yet. Let's do one minus x squared plus one minus our y value. I'd like to sub out our y value and put it in terms of x. And we actually know exactly what the y equals. That y value is going to equal one minus x squared. But then finish the Pythagorean theorem formula and we have that. So um, almost getting there. Let's go ahead and distribute, combine some like terms, and let's do some math here. So if I multiply this out and I do a 1 minus x times another 1 minus x, I'm going to get a 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And then here, I would distribute a negative, so I would switch their signs. Um, and then if I switch their signs, put my square in the wrong spot. So that square is on the x. And then that thing is squared. So it's not this whole thing squared. It's uh, just the x being squared. So that very much nicely changes what I'm going to do here. That I have these ones that are going to cancel each other. And then I just have a plus x squared. But that x squared is being squared. So it's a uh, plus x to the fourth. All right. So one last little bit. is let's go ahead and put this thing in order. So we got an x to the fourth plus x squared minus two x plus one. Square root it. And since I know I'm about to do the derivative, I'm gonna set this up to have a better look for our derivative. Have it to the one half power. All right, so now we're ready to do the derivative. So our hypotenuse is our distance, um, and we're going to do the derivative of it. So the derivative of that 
is going to be a chain rule. So the one half power is going to come in front. And we're going to have x to the fourth plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. We're going to subtract 1 from our power. And then, so that's the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. That's the chain rule part. Um, so then the derivative of the inside is 4x to the third plus 2x minus 2. All right, so that is our derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to be taking this and setting it equal to zero. So as I'm doing that, I'm also going to be kind of organizing this and cleaning this up a little bit. One thing I can do is I have a negative one half. So I'm going to be taking this piece, bringing it to the denominator and putting a square root on it. Uh, and then I can do half of this. I can actually distribute this one half in to these three pieces. So we're going to get a fraction that has this square root, this piece on the bottom, x to the fourth plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that is, we're going to be sending it equal to 0. And then this is going to be on the numerator, but we're going to be taking half of all those pieces. So that's going to look like a 2x cubed plus x minus 1. All right. So we're setting that equal to 0. The wonderful thing about setting something with a fraction equal to 0 is when we clear out our fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by this which really is just going to turn this into plus x minus 1. All right, so then that's going to turn that, and that's all that we're trying to solve. Now, this is not factorable. Um, no matter what I try to do, I'm not going to be able to factor it. So we have a method that we can solve um, these types of equations. No problem is we can graph it. So if we graph it, we're looking for x-intercepts. So let's take... 2x to the third plus x minus 1. And if we graph it, let's do a normal window. We have one x-intercept, so we're going to get one solution out of that. And so let's find our x-intercept. Here's our left side. Here's our right side. So we're looking at 0 0.5898. Okay, so there is our potential maximum. Let's double check that we actually get a maximum out of it. So 0 0.5898. So I want to make sure that we get, I'm sorry, we're not getting a maximum. We should be getting a minimum. So let's make sure that we get a minimum. So here's our slope equation, right? And so if I plug in something like a zero into this, I would have a whole bunch of zeros with a square root of one. So that's positive on the bottom. And then on the top, we would have uh, a negative one. So we'd have a negative over a positive. And then if we plug in something large, let's say 100 to go extreme, we're definitely going to get a positive over a positive. So we have a negative slope transitioning to a positive slope which guarantees us that this is going to be a minimum. So uh, we're looking for what's the point, the coordinate, right, to where we have this closest distance right here. And the x value is 0 0.5898. And then the y value is, I don't know. We're going to go back to our equation. So we're going to do 1 minus the 0.5898 squared. And that's going to get us 0 0.6521. And that coordinate is going to be our minimum distance away from the 0.11.